Hi, I'm Callista Redmond, CEO of Risk 5 International. I'm here today to talk to you about the disruption that we're seeing as open source comes to hardware, specifically at the microprocessor level. Today, Risk 5 is all about technology, opportunity, and community. You know, our world is shaped over time, over many generations, by the influences of both positive invention and negative disruption, whether it's a global pandemic or a technical revolution. We've seen this time and again. We've also witnessed that when that playing field becomes overweighted by the interests of only a few, or in some cases only one, it's time for the game to change. Reshaping history is within our reach, within our domain. It's about removing those barriers, coming together and taking a united approach. Disruptive technology is at the heart of what we see going on in Risk V and across the industry. Taking an open approach has been fundamental in revolutionizing how we view software, and this is now at the semiconductor level. Risk V in particular has ushered in a new era of open processor design. With only 47 base instructions and a modular approach, you take that very small base ISA and add on to it the extensions that are relevant for the workload that you're tackling. That modular approach is markedly different than the incremental approach of legacy ISAs. Legacy ISAs that need to keep adding many extensions into the base, such that the base becomes so big, it is very difficult to take a very custom approach. The variables that most semiconductor designers are tackling today for the challenges that they're wishing to overcome are not just about price and performance anymore. There's a third variable at play here, and that's about flexibility, design flexibility, and taking the barriers of IP constraints out of the way those barriers mean that you have that design freedom, that you have that flexibility. We don't have license or royalty fees associated with Risk v And that has ushered in tremendous growth around the ecosystem. We now have numerous extensions, both open and proprietary cores, and many other technical uh, innovations that are rapidly coming to market. Our software ecosystem is moving along great as well. Moving from uh, base operating systems and RTOS up through the tools and design resources to really compose the best semiconductor for your purpose. This means that the business model is changing too. All of this disruption is happening at once. On the business side, think about what goes into your product. The partners that you innovate with, that you collaborate with to tackle the challenge, including the client in many cases. Think about the supply chain. How can you overcome barriers in your supply chain? How do you ensure that you are working with Risk v in a manner that is supportive across many stakeholders? So what comes into your product also opens up opportunity for where you can take your product. And that is true of open source around the world. So as you build on open source foundation building blocks, it gives you much more opportunity to enter into new space. That could be geographically, it could be an adjacent area to the technical domain you're already in, could mean a number of things to expand your business and reap more reward for your investment. All of the stakeholders in this growing community on Risk v also lowers your overall design risk. It means that there are more people de designing on Risk v such that Risk v is not gonna be obsolete in another decade. In fact, we foresee Risk v lasting many decades of computing into the future. So beyond removing barriers, Risk v is at the right time in the right place. We see an explosion in demand for custom processors. This is something that we've witnessed growing uh, through um, you know, the 2000s, and it is about to really take off. And Risk v is there to capitalize on that. So let's think about, well, what are other people saying? Gartner, specifically. By 2025, 40% of ASICs are going to be designed in-house by OEMs. This is continuing to take hold across other, area, other industries as well. Risk v enables that unique design element 
and we're seeing it from IoT through and embedded all the way through to enterprise. But what specifically are they seeing as an impact? First is the free and open model that fuels and builds a foundation upon which you can add open or proprietary extensions, designs, and other elements. This open implementation model means that you have improved security, complete transparency and visibility of everything that goes into your product ensures greater security. And that's in addition to all the efforts we have underway to ensure maximum security at all levels. This open business model is also encouraging collaboration across many boundaries. So we see adoption. Adoption happening from cloud service providers bringing uh, RISC-V into uh, their data centers from HPC and onward. OEMs are continuing to look at RISC-V for the future of where their workloads are going. OEMs have traditionally looked to uh, specialization and customization as new workloads are entering the domain, such as AI. Semiconductor vendors are participating as well and streamlining their design resources to make it easier to adopt this custom approach. There are lots of predictions on how fast this market is moving. And you know, so many of the graphs will look pretty much like this. So, you know, 30 billion connected and IoT devices. There is room for innovation here. There is room for many approaches here. And an open approach with RISC-V is really starting to take hold. So this is 30 billion by 2021. That's next year. We are well on our way on this trajectory. Well, what is the share of that that we think RISC-V is going after? Well, you know, Semico predicts 62.4 billion RISC-V CPU cores are going to be in market by 2025. The leading area for this is industrial. Let's look at, you know, the, the, the full ecosystem here. So beyond IP, and there's lots of IP licensing to be had here for core design, for SOC design, for systems for you know, taking things that are specific to AI in a cloud data center and thinking about acceleration in HPC. We see the total market for RISC-V IP and software, tools and resources to get your design off the ground, to grow uh, to 1.1 1 .1 billion by 2025. This is an incredible growth rate. I'm not sure you see this in many sectors. So what industries are really kind of adopting RISC-V? As I mentioned, industrial is very popular. Uh, memory and uh, other acceleration for memory controllers are being implemented. We see a lot of growth in consumer and IoT devices from wearables to, well, any place where you want the compute happening right at the data ingest rather than siphoning back and forth to the cloud. We see it in automotive, especially important in safety and security. We absolutely need the compute happening at the source rather than to the cloud and back in something as critical as automotive safety. In mobile and wireless, we're continuing to see rapid adoption of RISC-V as well. Like I said, from embedded to enterprise and everything in between, there really isn't one sweet spot. There are many for RISC-V. So how are we doing at RISC-V International? Well, we're continuing to grow pretty fast. In 2020 alone, our membership has shot up more than 50%. We now have more than 700 members across 50 countries. We're seeing a diversity of members across many stakeholder areas, as you see from chip to software, uh, from IO to industry to research and academia. This growth rate is really quite balanced. We have about a third of our members in North America, a third in Europe, and another third in APAC. You know, none of us are doing this in isolation. It takes the dedicated engagement of the full community. And that's what we're realizing and the passion and the energy that comes from RISC-V is really based in the spirit that we see in the community. Each of these stakeholders is investing their company strategy, their university strategy, and shifting to RISC-V. And across the board, we need one another. When you build a community, 
Well, when you build a city, you don't just have roads and bridges, you also have other parts of the critical infrastructure. You need grocery stores, schools, hospitals. Similarly, as we build a technology community, we need each of those critical components. In fact, you know, even investors are getting on board. Today, we have more than 100 members who are less than 500 employees. And that is a great indicator to us that the barriers truly have come down. There are companies starting out with their base strategy on risk five. And this is something that's super exciting to us to see in the industry, even alongside multinationals who are bringing risk five in you know, maybe early on as microcontrollers, but absolutely on radar as they evaluate new workloads, new challenges and new competitive angles that they're seeking in their markets. So how are we doing? You know, as complexity increases, we've started to move very uh, thoughtfully along this paradigm. We've started in, you know, the base hardware, the base ISA de definition, test chips, software tests, and we've moved steadily into 64 and 32 uh, bit, um, you know, microcontrollers and SOC designs and cores and we see many proof of concepts moving forward. We see uh, software growing from bare metal to operating systems and RTOS, as well as now growing rapidly with Linux drivers, AI compilers, and that is where our future goes. We will continue to have available technical deliverables as complexity continues to increase. We have 43 work groups working on various extensions and other pieces of this puzzle right now. So why join Risk Five, or why be part of this community? The community is here to foster both our, our shared and mutual success, as well as the individual success of each of our members. It's very important to us that we continue to progress technical deliverables, that we stay on track and guard against fragmentation. And it's through these six programs, including technical deliverables, that we return value back to all of our members. We're composing and developing test suites to ensure that you're compliant to the base ISA. We're increasing visibility, not of what RISC-V International is doing, but the many accomplishments of our members, the progress we're making in the industry, learning and talent. Whether you're a student in a university, we're ensuring that we connect universities with curricula, labs, lectures, and other resources to really infuse and strengthen their learning approaches. And we're bringing on uh, online learning MOOCs and other uh, online learning that you know, practitioners can get uh, upskill anytime, anywhere. And we also have a great set of RISC-V training partners. If you have a team that needs training on RISC-V, we've got a whole slate of training partners who are ramping up and already delivering RISC-V uh, courses. Advocacy. This is an important area for us. We want engineers talking to engineers. This is a realm where we have 30 different meetup groups around the world. We also have developer forums and alliances with 15 other organizations where we work in concert and harmony together. This is, Risk Five is not about competing. Risk Five is all about collaborating. And that's where we all win and move forward together. We also have a marketplace exchange. This is kind of the center of gravity for the latest uh, Risk Five deliverables from SOCs and cores to uh, developer boards to other artifacts and other elements, services as well, and software, design tools and other resources that all come together in one place. So if you're looking to find out who's doing what on RISC-V, this is a great place to start. So I encourage you to join RISC-V if you haven't already become a part of the community. Understand the incredible benefits that you get, not only of working shoulder to shoulder with the technical leaders that are working on RISC-V today, but also to infuse your visibility, your strategic impact as you take an open approach to hardware. Think of it as a great way to build your innovation network, as well as possibly your customer pipeline. Think of it as a place to showcase what you're doing, to add your voice to this community. You know, it's so important that we think about open source as a mission. It's not a volunteer activity. It's not a charity. It's not something you do in your off hours. 
It's something of strategic importance to hundreds of companies around the world. It's something of strategic importance and passion to our many engineers and individuals who are engaged in committing their time and resource to risk five. So build it into your personal mission as an individual, as a company, as a team, as public institutions and nonprofits, and even as nations. We've been declared the national architecture of both Pakistan and India. Uh, let's make that a, a global policy to have a global architecture. So thank you. I appreciate getting to uh, talk with you today. And please follow us on risk5.org. Follow me, follow us on Twitter as well as uh, on LinkedIn. I also am sharing to you uh, my WeChat. Thank you.